Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Hearthstone Deck Spotlight. My name is Tommy Wave, and today we'll be taking a look at True Horde's Rush Warrior. Uh, Rush Warrior is an archetype that has been much derided, I guess. It's never really been a, a, a Tier 1 deck, at least as far as I was aware. Um, always been something that people have wanted to experiment with, and something that Blizzard has wanted to support, you know, even in the most recent expansion we had Akali the Rhino and Spirit of the Rhino, and I, from early uh, deck building, from trying out some early decks, I guess the concern was that, you know, Spirit of the Rhino on its own is uh, pretty low impact, that often rush minions are, you know, already good against decks that are committing to the board, against decks that want to you know, get board control, rush minions are really good. So how good can making those minions uh, immune in those situations really be? Like, it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, getting more advantage when you already have an advantage. Um, and also it doesn't help that, you know, against control decks uh, or against decks that aren't really committing a lot to the board, that's when rush minions are the weakest. And that's when the Spirit of the Rhino doesn't actually do anything for your deck. Can't really, don't really want to have dead cards in our deck in almost any matchups, let alone ones where we're trying to get on the board and finish the game uh, in a pretty reasonable pace. Uh, but True Horde here, uh, gone back into the tank and come out with something that looks pretty interesting. We'll go over some of the cards here. Uh, we've got two Inner Ages right at the start. Uh, this Now, there's no uh, Acolyte of Pain or anything in this deck. Um, I believe there are a couple of synergies in here. You know, we've got Frothing Berserker. Uh, we could use this as a removal spell if we wanted to. Uh, we've got Sudden Genesis, which can uh, combine with the Inner Rage and like Core Chronolite for some pretty, pretty, pretty good damage actually. So uh, I, I actually kind of like Inner Rage here. Uh, we've got some nice one drops in Eternium Rover and Town Crier. Eternium Rover can be a nightmare for some decks, especially Odd Paladin, just really trades quite well, gets you some armor in the process, can make you a lot harder to fish, finish off, and Town Crier as well, great stats, 1-2, and uh, also helps us fill up our curve by getting us a Rush minion, which could be, you know, a 4-drop, 5-drop, you know, an 8-drop, uh, just helpful in general. We've also got the two Spirit of the Rhinos here, which is definitely something we'll be keeping an eye on. Uh, onto the two drops, we've got Keller sets, so no, there's no Woodcutter's Axe, no uh, Red Band Wasp or anything in this deck, no Battle Rage or anything. Uh, just going for Keller Seth here, and I think that's the right choice. We do have quite a lot of minions in here. Uh, onto the threes, Frothing Berserker, one of the better uh, warrior cards to be playing. Uh, has an excellent... Um, you know, if your opponent doesn't do anything about it, it can snowball out of uh, out of control. Rabid Worgen, uh, just very st uh, standard here. Oftentimes, the Rabid Worgen does just get used as a removal spell, as a li three mana lightning bolt, as it were. Um, but if we can ever get into a situation where we're you know hitting a radiant elemental or something like that, we're uh, going to be in a good position. Onto the four drops, Blood Razor. Uh, once again, not doesn't synergize with too much here, other than the uh, you know, Frothing Berserker and Sudden Ge and Sun Genesis. But just a f phenomenal card in general, going to help us trade quite well. Core Chron Elite for a bit of burst damage. Militia Commander is another rush minion that uh, uh, we can uh, you know synergize with the rest of our deck. And I think Militia Commander is actually in a really good spot right now. There are a lot of you know four. Four toughness, three toughness things out there that Militia Commander kills and sticks around to uh, trade the next turn. Uh, Darius Crowley, probably one of the best rush, rush minions in our deck. Fest Root Hulk, a card you might not have seen before, but a card that I've been very... Uh, uh, I, I really like this card. I was saying when this card was first spoiled that it might give Warrior the critical mass of uh, kind of snowball-y aggressive cards. Uh, that it could actually be quite good. It also has a really, really high toughness, so it's quite hard to kill with damage-based removal spells or other minions. So I actually really like Fest Root Hulk, and this might be a good Fest Root Hulk deck. Now, this one of Sudden Genesis is uh, is a bit strange, but like I was saying before, with the Inner Rage, with the uh, the Blood Razor, we do have some potential for this card. I like the one of. I like the kind of surprise factor of it. Um, so, but we will be keeping an eye on if this card is just dead in our hand more often than not. Uh, Ziliax, once again, another great, uh, rush minion. We've all seen this one before. Now, the next section of cards is where things get a bit, uh, dicey. I'm unsure about these ones. Zihi, in theory, sounds great. I love the idea of stopping our opponent from doing very powerful things, 
uh, even if it's just for a turn or two, uh, by resetting their mana back to five. So if they're trying to deploy Frostlich Jaina, Gul'dan, uh, you know, Twisting Nether, uh, any of those kind of really high power level things, we can kind of delay them for a little bit and hopefully kill our opponent. Uh, Sulthrace is not a card that I've played with before. Um, definitely played with a lot more Super Colliders and uh, Fiery War Axes uh, and other such things. Um, so not too sure about how I feel about this one, especially with the overkill. We'll, we'll see. Um, we've got a Countess Ashmore in here as well. This gives us a little bit of uh, late game potential, a little bit of late game draw. We don't actually have any other draw. Like I said, there's no Battle Rage or Acolyte of Pain in here. So we might have to lean on uh, the Countess to kind of win us some of those long-term games. And then we've got the kind of eight drops here. Akali, Gromash, and Scourge Lord Garrosh. Um, I like Grom because we have Inner Rage. I like Akali because there's Rush and we've got some synergies there. The Scourge Lord Garrosh though feels a little bit out of place. It is 12 damage over the course of three turns. Um, it does give us that, that uh, Blade Storm power, but like we said, we don't have a lot of synergies with that. And I'd almost rather see this as uh, like a Doctor Boom or just cut it and play something um, more aggressively. Um, but I could be totally wrong. Hopefully I'm totally wrong. And Scourge Lord Garrosh is absolutely gas. So regardless, we're going to jump into some games. Uh, hopefully we get some wins. But even if we don't, I think we just want to get some learns about Rush Warrior. Uh, figure it out as an archetype. And look, maybe it is pretty well positioned after the most recent round of nerfs. But without further ado, let's go. Okay, we are here with True Horde's Rush Warrior. And I've got a pretty interesting hand here. Um, I'm actually pretty tempted to keep this Spirit of the Rhino. But I might kick it back just so we have some more options for curving out. Yeah, let's let's do that. Ooh, into the Keleseth as well. Very tasty draw here. So definitely, we'll go for the uh, turn one Ethereum over turn two Keleseth, so that the uh, rush minion we pull out with the Town Crier or two is uh, is buffed. And we won't coin out this Keleseth just so it doesn't get traded into by this Kobold Librarian, just in case it is a, uh, an aggressive, an aggressive uh, Warlock deck. Well, looks like regardless our... Uh, ooh, okay. I was going to say regardless our Keleseth will get traded into, but... Hmm. It's a good draw. This, I was a little bit concerned with that coin there. Even though the coin feels good. Oh, Witch's Cauldron. Okay. Our opponent's on some, uh, opponent's brewing up a spicy number. Not choosing to trade. Okay. I'm okay. So yeah, with that coin, we like the coin feels really good just with the texture of our hand, like very low cost. You know, probably not going to get a lot of advantage from the uh, the coin itself. But our deck says differently. Our deck has a lot of kind of key six and eight six and eight drops that we uh, may want to have coined out. Hmm. My. Life for a blood razor. What now? The blade be tasty. Blood will flow. So hopefully we're not going to get punished by leaving this replicating menace in play. But this looks like some kind of egg. Egg Wall? Maybe they're gonna explode and need a trade Grim Rally? That could be a great turn. 
unfortunately, they just can't trade with anything good. So we could go for Ziliax here, bump into the Explodinator, go face with everything, just kind of disrupt our opponent a little bit. I think I'm actually going to trade here. It's, uh... It, we do lose... We don't lose two damage. We only lose one damage because of the Frothing Berserker. But, uh... Just reduces our opponent's... Potential for, like, a big Grim Rally turn or something like that. I'm thinking I'm better geared for Wild than Standard right now. I, I'm... You know what? I think most people who are well geared for standard would also be well geared for wild but uh what makes you say that so it's, it, it's just interesting that you say better geared for wild than standard wow i was not expecting this deck to have a hellfire in it. You win this time. got him cool yeah, I don't think I've seen a uh, kind of egg, egg warlock deck with Hellfire in it. Well, maybe I have, and I'm just uh, misremembering things. But uh, that was an awesome opening opener from us. That uh, kind of shows you how how strong this kind of deck can be against a deck that is you know wants to be on board and where you can get a lot of value out of your rush minions. So, GG's, well played. Okay, we are up here against the against the hunter with True Horde's Rush Warrior. Definitely keeping the Keliseth. Send everything else back. Hopefully we can hit an Eternium Rover. Hmm. Town Crier is okay. We would prefer to uh, be able to rip a buff minion out of the deck. But we're certainly not going to stop curving. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yeah, sure. Why not? Does the hot dog want to be a sandwich? Meat sandwich with meat buns and bread patties. Oh, I thought you were going to go full meat. Isn't that a, uh, it's like a Ren and Stimpy, uh, skit? What do you want on your sandwich, Kowalski? Meat! Listen here. Uh, what bread do you want on your meat sandwich, Kowalski? Meat! Okay, here's your meat on meat sandwich. Egg and lettuce and ham and cheese. Tomato half pack? What's half pack? What does that mean? Like a half a pack of tomatoes? How big is a pack of tomatoes? Is that how they like roam the Serengeti? Watch the pack of tomatoes as they roam the Serengeti. A real sandwich is a taco. I am Mexican. That's fair enough. Ooh! Big aggressive mole boy. Coin what? Coin what? What? Coin spring portrayed? Color me confused. be thirsty. Blood will flow. Unfortunately, here our opponent can trade into the uh, Frothing Berserker with the Crackling Razormore and the Spring Paw that's in their hand. But it's not too bad. Don't at me that tacos aren't sandwiches. <laughs> at the King of Engineers. They ain't. It's tremendous. Is hot dog a cereal? Well, now you're just being. Now you're just being ridiculous. Had fried oyster po' boy for s That's a sandwich? Fried lobster po' boy. I don't eat a lot of lobsters. A lot of oysters. I was about to say lobsters. I don't eat a lot of either of those things. Is fried oyster a, a common thing? Defend the gates. 
It's a full sandwich worth. But it half one half. Oh, okay. 7 Eleven does a decent sandwich. I'm not gonna lie, I've eaten. Crunch. A lot of 7 Eleven sandwiches in my time. That was like my thing when, uh. When I was in. In uni. And at TAFE was just 7 Eleven sandwiches all day, baby. Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Okay. I'd die for a Philly cheesesteak right now. I'd die from a Philly cheesesteak right now. Though that thing would just wreck my insides. So this isn't freezing. Could be a. Uh... Yep. One rings. One rings. Okay. get the Spirit of the Rhino down. I will say Spirit of the Rhino buffed with uh, Keliseth. It's actually pretty tasty. You know what else is technically a sandwich? A Chinese pork bun. It's also real tasty. Fairly common in season in New Orleans that for fried oysters. Interesting. Is that a regional kind of thing or is that is it an everything kind of thing? Okay. Hmm. Do we go Blood Razor here? Quark we could go Blood Razor and then Inner Rage up this and just get real aggressive. We could trade and play Z here. I think we'll go with Z here. Just a Just uh, get a nice selection of bodies out here. I think that's kind of one of the weaknesses of um, of a lot of mid-range hunter decks is that they just don't have a lot of removal for very big high toughness targets. And if they start having to use kill commands on kill command on our minions. Yeah, that's exactly where we want to be. Turnium Rover. For war chief. Your will is mine. Oh, look at this giant lad. In awe at the size of this lad. It's kind of what I was talking about, where, you know, if you... Uh, like, this card can just really uh really grow to quite large size or uh, quite a large size interesting did they just draw this subject nine as well or did our z here last turn actually kind of prevent them from doing a thing master, master. i think you die friend i think this fester root hulk is going to uh fester all over you Ah. Got him. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm in the mood for an egg sandwich now. Damn. I am too. <laughs> GG's. Well played to our opponent. Okay, up against Mage here. With the Rush Warrior. I think we're actually going to send all of this back. I think those those draws that we've been getting where we have, you know, Town Cryer or Eternium Rover into Keliseth have just been... Really tremendous. Is that greetings? Is greetings happy now? It is. I have a suitcase full of Mexican sweets. Mexican sweet breads. That's cute. I like that. So we're up against the odd mage. And we really just don't have a great hand here. Even if we coin out this uh, frothing berserker. Which might actually just be the thing we have to do. Hmm. Fortunately, if our opponent has the uh, fire breather, things look pretty bad for us. 
Welcome to the show. Mm. Yep. Well, we got a little bit lucky there. Unfortunately, it does just get killed by this hero power. We're just gonna get so much value off of this. But not this turn. Alright. Cleared up that board, but... I think our opponent's probably on a bit more of a late game deck than us. Maybe we have to rely on uh, Akali to do some damage. Got a cookbook and a stream baking later down the road. Heck yeah! King's Kitchen, that's an excellent name. Hmm. Fortunately, our opponent's going first as well, so we can't even try and, like, you know, land an Akali and then, uh, Zihi them out of their, um, off of their Jaina. Oh. We should have magnetized it. Maybe we don't want to. Maybe we don't want to because of polymorph. Arena's full. Beat it. Beat it. Amazing. Is this the best sudden genesis we're gonna get? Amazing. Probably is. Primitive. Don't have Kitchen Island. Reality. Kitchen Island? Oh, like a Kitchen Ooh. Island. Yeah, okay. Oh my gosh. I don't think, uh... I don't think we kind of long for this world. Let's just get our Kali out here. Give me those big buffs. Yes, this large lad. That's what they call him in WoW lore. Large lad Darius Crowley. Oh. Rush the enemy! Defend the gunner! Even larger lad, Darius Crowley. Let's try and not get uh killed. I think it's pretty likely. Opponent has another flame strike Welcome here. Nope. He's had the Kali. Got the. Nope. Green screen it and use an ironing board? Hi, this is my uh, cooking show where I uh, cook Mexican sweetbread on an ironing board. Let's just hope they don't have, like, one of ten cards that kills this this turn. Oh, the Corrosive Sludge! 
got me. Oh my gosh. My power will be stronger yet. Hmm. I don't think we're going to be able to push through. Like, we've only got the, the Grommage left. Yeah, of course it should. So. Those who wield it. Yeah, I don't think it's happening, friends. GG's. So, a bit of an awkward start there. Not as good as uh, the past couple of games, but... Definitely kind of just showing that some of these are these late game cards don't have a super high impact or, or that once we get if our opponents playing eight mana things or doing things for eight or nine mana often it's a lot better than what we can do for eight or nine mana um, in warrior at least so uh, GG's we'll play to our opponent okay here with another game with true hordes rush warrior up against the hunter send the, these two back we'll keep the town crier Not a bad hand. It's missing a Kelisa. But we'll make do. But yeah, the uh... The most recent expansion was... About a month and a half ago. Coin 3 drop. To my side. Leoc. I'm boss. Happy to trade trade off the Leoc. I think <clears throat> it gets quite dangerous with cards like uh, Unleash the Hounds or Springpaw. Master's calling up here. It's a pretty interesting play as it does just let us for free get a frothing berserker on the board now it's on on our opponent to really find an answer to it ooh nice okay go for a uh, fester root hulk here now this is going to be pretty tough if they don't have the the hunter's mark this is definitely going to be hard for them to uh to deal with Okay, what's this going to be? Death Rattle. So unfortunately these death rattles can just trade with our uh, Zilliax here. We also could have gone for like Darius and just trade with the uh... Wow. Okay. Opponents had a lot of cards that have matched up. Hopefully this Darius can, uh, kind of run away with the game here. Rush the enemy! Defend Because they've used both flanking strikes, I believe. No, there's the... Oh, jeez. It's 
proving to be uh, a lot more difficult than expected. Actually gonna trade here. Hope they don't have Rexa. If they have Rexa, then they have it. This also maybe sets us up for an interesting uh, sudden genesis turn. Oh my gosh, the other spring pour. Okay. So Warlord Lottie with Fandral Staghelm, does she do all four transformations? She does. She even has unique artwork, specifically if you have Fandral and you play Lottie. It's like a weird giant dino bear tiger thing. Hmm. Do they have the other kill command? That sounds like a new deck for me. Trying to do Warlord Lottie and Fandral Staghelm. It's Tundra right now. Scav. Ugh. Well, at least the Sakali can take out the, this other Rhino. And Wing Blast. Oh my god. Okay. Wait, we need the overkill. Uh, we need to inner rage at first. That was bad. That was real bad. They just have another uh, rhino here too. Any, any beast? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely goofed on that one, unfortunately. Militia Commander, I think, gets us out of it. I guess we could have also just attacked the Akali into the Scavenging Hyena. Do have the other kill command? So, unfortunately we goofed there. Ah, uh, these things happen. We certainly don't profess to be the best player. Hopefully our opponent enjoys the, uh, enjoys the card back if they needed it. But, we'll take a look at the deck. I, I think we've... Our opponent did have a lot of cards that matched up very well for the situation. I think that that kind of matchup could very very much go either way depending on who has the f the better first couple of turns. Um, but our opponent really did answer back with a lot of things. Flanking Strike is tremendous and without this deck having a card like say uh, Dynamatic, we can't don't really have the same comeback potential to get back into it. We do have to rely on those minions uh, which can get fairly dicey when our opponent has you know, scavenging hyena combos and things like that. But, uh, we can certainly also play better. That's another th lesson to learn. Um, other than that, look, I think my main, uh, my main gripes with this deck is just the late game. Um, uh, doesn't exactly feel too powerful. I, this soul raise, I couldn't have imagined a situation where it would have been super useful, especially now with the Hunter Spellstone, uh, being nerfed. I think a lot of people are moving away from it. So what I'd actually like to do is I'd like to kind of comb this deck down, maybe cut the soul raise, cut the Grom and cut the, uh, Scourge Lord Garrosh. Maybe we can keep the Grom in here, but cut a couple of those things and try and do some more stuff, uh, particularly in that kind of, that three drop slot, maybe even try and get some, uh, 
some uh, some more sudden genesis uh, kind of synergies going on, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I can't think of think of too much else, but there's something something feels good here. Uh, maybe we could try uh, cutting the prints and playing something different. But uh, there there are some things to like here. There are some things to uh, uh, that feel a bit awkward, and there's certainly a lot to uh, experiment with within this archetype. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to it going forward as, uh, I believe in the expansion, you only really lose Keleseth and, uh, not too much else. So there's certainly a lot to look forward to with Rush Warrior as an archetype. Uh, regardless, if you are watching on YouTube, of course, all the links are down in the description, including a link over to the Hearthpone deck article. Please jump over there, give True Horde a plus one, give them a, sh a lovely, thoughtful comment, as I know you will. Uh, my details are down there as well, including a link over to Twitter at Tommy underscore wave is where you can catch me If you've got a sweet sweet uh, Deck that you want me to check out big shout out to cloudy HS as well for the host 13 viewer host. Hello everyone from Cloudy's stream uh, But yeah until next time stay safe stay wavy eat the rich and uh, Corrupt some blood bye. I Hope you enjoyed that video Check out other ones over here, or come subscribe to the Wave Pool for more excellent times.